For today's lesson, our focus standard comes from grade 7, ratios and proportions, standard A, 2. Decide whether two quantities are in a proportional relationship. Our topic for today's lesson comes from proportional rela relationships, titled proportional relationships. Our essential question is, how can unit rates help us determine if a relationship is proportional? Please take a moment, pause the video if you need to, to copy down the topic and the central question in your header, along with today's date, side your question column, and your note column, and resume the video when you're ready to begin. Let's start by defining what we mean exactly by a proportional relationship. So a proportional relationship, any relationship, is something that compares two variables. What makes it proportional is when that relationship includes the following criteria. It must create a series of equivalent ratios that all simplify to a constant unit rate. This is oftentimes referred to as a constant of proportionality. And both variables must start at zero. So let's examine our story problem for today to determine if we can use this criteria to decide whether or not the relationships are proportional. Elizabeth and Lars are prepping for a school walkathon fundraiser. The tables below show the data they collected at their last practice. Examining these tables for both Elizabeth and Lars we can see that the variables we're looking at is the time in minutes compared to the distance measured in meters. Let's see what our first question is regarding this math story. Is Elizabeth and or Lars walking at a constant rate? So this will be talking about the first criteria of a proportional relationship. And if so, what is the unit rate in meters per minute? Did you spot that word again? Here's that key word we've been focusing on, per. It helps us set up our ratios, telling us that the variable listed first, meters, will be our numerator, and the variable listed after per, minutes, is going to be our denominator. So to answer this question, let's add a row to our table to represent those ratios. So add a row where we're going to compare meters to minutes for each of the data points in their tables. For example, the first ratio for Elizabeth would be 48 to 1, or 48 over 1, because it's 48 meters in the first minute. And then continue this for the rest of Elizabeth's data and for Lars's data. What did you notice? Well, what I found is in each of these ratios, comparing the distance in meters to the measurement of time in minutes, for Elizabeth, they all simplify to that constant rate of 48 meters in one minute. This was not true for Lars. Two of them are equivalent, right here where they simplify down to 45 meters per minute, but they're not all equivalent. So to answer that question, we'd want to state something like this. Elizabeth is walking at a constant rate because each ratio comparing distance to time is equivalent to the unit rate of 48 meters per minute. And we can see that there in our calculations. Let's continue the analysis. Do both of their time and distance start at zero? This is that second criteria of a proportional relationship. And looking back at their tables, it doesn't exactly tell us. Is there a pattern that you see that might help us figure it out? Well, here's what I notice. For both Elizabeth and Lars, in their data table, the time increased by one minute each time. So I could backtrack and say, well, if it adds one each time, let's step back and subtract one each time, and the time would be zero minutes. Same for Lars. However, 
With Elizabeth's data, I can see that she also adds 48 each time. 48 plus 48 is 96, plus 48 is 144. So we could then use that pattern, since it is consistent, and subtract 48. And doing so, 48 minus 48 is 0. So it does look like Elizabeth's time and distance start at 0, 0. With Lars, his increases at different intervals. First 50, then 60, then 100, then 30. So we can't guarantee for sure that we can backtrack because we don't, wouldn't know what number to use. It's not consistent increasing. Therefore, to answer our question, do both of their time and distance start at zero? We'd say something like this. Elizabeth does start is yes, that both of their time and distance start at zero because we can work backwards and see at zero minutes she covered zero meters but we have no way to tell for sure with Lars. Can you tell at this point, using the criteria for a proportional relationship, whether Elizabeth or Lars or both of them represent a proportional relationship? So let's go ahead and continue our investigation. For our next question, we're being asked to graph the data points from our tables, and then we'll write what we notice about Elizabeth's data and about a Lars Lars's data. To graph it, please use graph paper and set up a graph like I've done here. We're going to put time and minute on the x-axis and we're going to increase by one minute at a time, up until at least 10 minutes, maybe 13. On the y-axis, we're going to put distance in meters and I used a scale of 24. So for each of these dark grid lines, I'm increasing by 24. So pause the video to set up your graph, and if you'd like, go ahead and graph the points for Elizabeth and Lars, and then resume the video to do some comparison to see what we notice about their data on the graph. Here I've zoomed in, and right now, only with the green points, I'm showing Elizabeth's data. And I noticed a few things. For one, all of her data points form a perfectly straight line. We can draw, use a ruler and draw a straight line. Also, I can see her unit rate in the graph. Can you? Notice that we can draw equivalent stair steps between each of her points where it increases 48 for the y variable of distance, 48 meters increase for every one minute increase in time. And it creates these perfect equivalent stair steps, which allows it to be a straight line. Also, it starts at 0, 0. Her time in minutes is 0, and her distance is 0. Let's compare that to Lars. Now I've added Lars's points in orange points on the graph. If you tried to draw stairs, you would notice between each point that they're not equivalent. They're all they're different sizes. Also notice that we can't draw a straight line through his points. It would have to be more of a zigzag. These are key indicators to help us determine if it's a proportional relationship when just looking at data on a graph. So here are some of the bullet points that we noticed in our graph. Elizabeth's data formed a straight line, had equal stair steps that showed us the unit rate, and started at the origin. Where Lars's data was not a straight line, therefore had unequal stair steps, couldn't find a unit rate, and we're not sure that it started at 0, 0. So with all of that, if we're asking whose data represents a proportional relationship, what's the correct answer? You said Elizabeth's because she walks at a constant rate of 48 meters per minute, which is her unit rate, and starts at 0 for both distance and time. I'd agree with you. 
And that concludes our video on proportional relationships for today.